Well, obviously, both FlyQuest and DRX will be cheering for them to pull yeah. off a major upset here against Top. Uh, would give FlyQuest some small hope to get out of this group. But also, you know, any upset against Top is going to help DRX and their chances of getting out in first place. Right. Which, as we've seen from the other groups, could actually mean a lot. Mm -hmm. None of the teams that have progressed so far look bad, but the first seeds look particularly frightening. Yeah. So to be able to avoid a quarterfinals matchup against one of those teams could be a big boon for you. So definitely everybody's still invested in looking for that first seed. But hey, we're into the draft, so let's see what's banned away here. As that is a pretty rare ban these days. Jax banned away first and foremost by the Unicorns of Love. They're saying 369. Uh-uh, you're not getting that one. Well, not today, my friend. Gragas and Renekton also banned out here as Swain, Nidalee, and what's our third one? What's the Magic Champion portrait? It's going to show up on my screen. What do top esports want to keep away from the Unicorns here in this draft? It is Camille. Okay. Makes quite a bit of sense. You know, they, they are obviously targeting Gadget, I think, you know, with this Swain, you know, he has brought that out. Uh, he is one of really the only bot laner at Worlds thus far to be playing mages. So uh, that is something that he can try to look to surprise people with. Um, he has brought out the Karthus. He has brought out the Swain. Um, so he has some flexibility there. I think Jax makes a lot of sense because top, in my opinion, are the best team in the world at actually playing around that top lane. And we have seen Jax really crush some of those meta picks. The Jax ban, you know, is often used to actually protect the Camille, and I think that's why Top responded with their Camille ban, to try to take away that option. But Jax can also be difficult for things like Mordekaiser, so uh, does make sense as kind of a multi-purpose one against 369. First pick in the draft is Lucian. Makes a lot of sense with how strong the champion is, how often he's banned these days. Unicorns love taking advantage of the opportunity to go for that, but the response from Top is locking in the Syndra and the Ash. Mm -hmm. No Man's has played that mid lane Lucian. Uh, Gadget, at least regionally, did not play the Lucian at all. So we are expecting it to be mid lane. Yes, theoretically, Lucian can go top, can go bot. But in competitive play, it's been almost exclusively a mid laner. So the Syndra would be the assumed matchup there. Anonisic going towards Lilia helps to enable having that AD laner. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Generally, Lilia as well as Eve, those are kind of those two big AP options with Gragas and Nidalee already taken off the table. We haven't been seeing anything like Evelyn in quite a long, or rather like a Elise in a long time. So grabbing probably a, the highest priority AP jungler left up. Man, I forgot Elise was a champion. I'm not yeah, even no, no one plays it at all anymore, it's man. It's been just a been gone. Long time since spider I've seen got the squashed. spider. Feels badman, but looks like the pick to go along with the Lilia in this second rotation for okay. UOL will be Nautilus. So providing plenty of CC and engage potential here for this team. Yeah, one of Santis's most played. That alongside Thrash are kind of his two primary champions that he likes to go towards for the engage. So it will give you that point and click lockdown, always something that is considered pretty powerful, especially against champions that do not have dashes, such as the Syndra, such as the Ash, trying to help set up, lock down these champions so that they can be taken out quickly. But we have Graves as the answer to the Lilia. Graves has just been so common. Yep. Uh, Karsa, you know, he is one of the junglers that I think is absolutely elite in the world, but he generally does play a different style, at least in the LPL. He was much more of a facilitator, and that is something that people have been talking about with TES, is the fact that World seems like lanes playing for junglers, whereas in the LPL, Karsa was definitely sacrificing for his lanes. He was the guy who would skip camps to, to gank more often, to pressure, to be able to help them reset the waves, and to always facilitate his laners rather than the other way around. We'll see if Top want to flip the script here and utilize this Graves as their main carry, try to play more from him and help him out with that counter jungling. But more bot laners kind of banned out. Yes, the Karthus, yes, the Orianna, you traditionally would think would be going, you know, mid lane or jungle. Um, but Gadget is the guy playing a lot of these AP bottom laners. So I do believe he is the one being targeted here. And when you mention Top being a team that's adept at playing through Top, when you have a jungler like Graves, 
who's very powerful in 2v2 skirmishes, who can take neutral control easily because of his 1v1 dueling potential. That just means that if you do want to play through topside again, if you just want to open things up for 369, man, Graves is just a wonderful champion to have there on the flank, ready to have his back. Pantheon, Karthus, Orianna, Orn, all banned away. Fully expect to see top esports leave that top lane open. Okay, that's actually uh, a how, flex. Yeah, the Lulu could go either into the support or top lane roles here. Yeah. So I like the choice. Just makes it even harder, right? If you go to try to go towards something like a GP, then maybe you're laning up against a Lulu and you get smacked by that. Of course, this could just be going down to bottom lane for you, Yenja. Play it as a standard support. But 369, one of the reasons that Top is so proficient at playing through that lane is his willingness to actually pick some of these hard lane counters to go towards things like the Kale, like the Fiora, the Quinn, you know, the Urgot. He's willing to go to these picks, the Jax, of course, uh, and really look to destroy his opponents in that 1v1 pick heavily for it now this was pretty interesting so we do have that wukong uh, going up towards that top lane it could be bot lane nico looking for some of that cc uh, or for gadget but i do think that you know ziggs also kind of fits the bill uh, especially alongside solo laners that are ad damage which we are assuming this is going to be wukong top yeah um so the ziggs going to be the pick here Okay. can be quite proficient, and it does allow you to assist with the dive. So that's one of the things that works well about this, right? You have the point and click Nautilus ultimate, Wukong flying in over top, and presumably you then have the Ziggs ultimate dropped on the head of the Ash, of the Syndra, trying to look for that. The answer here going to be Scion. So one of the less common picks, but it is something that can actually uh, scrap quite well against the Wukong, you know, especially in the early levels. If you're going towards grasp, you have a lot of AOE, you have the ability to push in a really long extended trade. Wukong can get a lot of value out of the passive, stack up the Conqueror and start to win out, but it can be pretty difficult for Wukong. And you know, even with trying to dodge with the clones and going to a Viz, you can still be hit by the AOE of both the W as well as the slow from your E, you can get hit by the knockup because you reveal them when you pop your W. Uh, so there are a lot of ways for a Scion to fight back. And there's not really a lot of like frontline killing, right? You know, so yeah. so it can be difficult to actually just deal with one of these super tanks, such as the Scion, who's also going to be shielded up by the Lulu, which is effectively just giving you you know, additional health, right? You know, every time you're getting shielded, all those resistances become more valuable because you're having to punch through that again and again. And let's not forget his unstoppable engage potential. When you're up against something like a Ziggs that has very powerful zone control with his minefield and with his satchel charge, when you'd have to deal with a Nautilus normally providing so much peel, well, what does that matter if Scion is a freight train and can just find his way on to whichever target he can glide his aiming towards? I think this champion could pose a serious threat if not dealt with appropriately. And we've seen other teams try to deal with 369 before, and it's not gone so well. It's really, really tough to actually pin down this guy and punish him. Uh, really in lane or out of lane because he is such a proficient player at so many different champions, at so many different styles. He can win through hard split push, he can shove and group, he can be the hard engage, he can play weak side, he really can do it all. And you know, with this draft, sure, we could still see Karsa playing towards that top side, but this does feel like more of that standard lanes playing through your jungler style uh, that we've been seeing a lot of that world. You have a strong 2v2 here with the Syndra plus the Graves. They could look to try to push, to try to push in on No Man's and grab away things like those Raptors from Ananasik, who also wants to be heavily prioritizing the farm on that. And you can even see Karsa dropped his ward at level one at the Raptors. Um, but it is potentially an invade here uh, from UOL. They are going to make the calls a back off for now, though. And one thing I do want to point out here as the keystones were up on your screen for just a moment, Knight is running Electrocute on the Syndra. This is another one of those champions. I mentioned it for Azir last game, how sometimes you can see the keystones flexed around more often than not. Sometimes you'll see the Syndras take a phase rush, go for a more utility-based keystone. But Knight just wants to make sure that he's getting every possible little bit of damage he can squeeze out of this build. No man's going to drop a ward almost exactly on top of the one that we saw dropped by Top Esports there at that Raptor Pit, so they'll be able to keep an eye on that one. And once again, just a reminder, if Top Esports win this game, Top Esports and DRX will be 100% confirmed to be the two teams moving forward from this group and will be the final two teams to take a place in the knockout stage. If UOL win this game, 
there is still a very small but still real chance Ooh, that UOL or FlyQuest could move forward instead. But in this bottom lane 2v2, Santos is already oh. just committing a pretty grievous error of stepping too far forward, getting punished, forced to flash at level one. Yeah, I mean, he used his sweeper. They didn't even kill the ward. And he lost most of his health and had to flash. So now he's on uh, no potions already. Uh, that is brutal because the way that Nautilus usually has pressure in lanes is the threat of the hard engage, right? And, yep. and if you don't have the flash, if you are chunked out in lane, you lose all that threat. And then all of a sudden you have no presence in lane, right? And we can actually see something I was going to talk about, you know, was that Yu Yanja actually went towards a Spell Thief. So he is not the more defensive option. He is the more aggressive option, which also makes you more squishy. You know, therein could potentially be engaged on, but given the situation now, it is going to be very tough for Asantis to do that, and they can look to take an aggressive posture, push up, and constantly proc that Spell Thieves. And if Unicorns of Love ever does get to push out and Nautilus is there without his flash, he then becomes vulnerable to a gank opportunity from Karsa if he gets himself into that bottom lane. Remember, when Dredge Line's the only escape, all you got to do is block off the escape path, and the gank becomes a sure thing. Ananasic farming up here. However, he does have his mid laner with priority to make sure that top side of the river stays safe. He won't have to deal with Karsa at all. Karsa is all the way across the map there, taking that scuttle on the bottom side river. So split map state right now. And one of, the, one of the reasons that we don't see more mages in the bottom lane is a lot of the top dual laners feel that you can really tax mana as a resource and punish them by forcing out spells constantly and then really kind of wearing them down and making it harder and harder to farm, right? right. Giving them bad base timings where they don't have a lost chapter and things to actually keep high on mana. And so you're going to see with this double range bot lane, anytime Gadget tries to farm with an auto attack, both Yu Yanja and Jackie Love will be trying to auto attack him. Because the only way that Santas can really contribute then is by committing to an all in, right? You know, hooking in or moving forward. And since he doesn't have his flash, it's not really safe to do. And then what happens is you essentially have to try to CS just with your spells, which is going to tax the mana, which is going to put you down in the position where eventually you're either pushing the wave accidentally with your AoE and having it kind of semi-frozen on you, or you just run out of mana and you can't really effectively CS. Yeah, and out of mana, early game mage is essentially just a caster minion. So yeah, nobody's sad. going to be afraid of a zero mana level three Ziggs here. So Gadget is hanging back. Karsa is on the top side of the map. 369 and Boss is trading back and forth a little bit here. Is a farm advantage for 369, but when you look at the amount of minions currently pushing into the turret, Boss will be able to equalize that provided he farms this up correctly. I don't think he'll have any issue with it. It's not like 369 is going to stick around and try to harass him off that wave. He will use this opportunity to go back to base, get himself a good back timer, pick up the bombing cinder. And No Man's ends up losing some HP here in the mid lane against Knight. This Lucian with an early Null Magic Mantle and a Longsword means he's really paying a lot of respect towards Knight's Syndra and that Electrocute maximum damage build. An early Hex Drinker means he wants to avoid that all in. It definitely smells like a Hex Drinker. Could theoretically just be, you know, a casual little bit of magic resist and go towards something like the Blade of the Rune King. You know, I wouldn't mind that either, especially because it's, it's only one AP threat, right? Lulu, we're not even going to count. It's going to be support items. Uh, that magic damage doesn't really matter that much, so it really is just Knight who is threatening you in that way. And if you do rush towards, you know, Hex Drinker, Merc Treads, this kind of defensive style of build, uh, you're not going to have any threat on people like the Scion. Well, Scion finding himself getting spun around on by the Wukong. And with Ananasic nearby, 369 did see the need to flash over the wall. That's one of those tricky walls that sometimes we see people have bad experiences with the flash over. But 369 <laughs> is well versed in the way he's a top lane, knows how to get over that one and get himself back to safety. And honestly, considering he got hit by both Wukong ulties. That's what I was laughing at. He, he <laughs> only lost 20% of his health. Wukong spun around on him and was pretty much just a Beyblade. He spun into the wall, he fell over, and he's like, all right, we'll get him next time. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he forced the shield out, right? And uh, <laughs> didn't really get much done with the damage. Uh, it was nicely played by 369. You know, the, the flash is respectful because you want to keep your health high. Um, but one of the things that makes Scion so difficult to punish is he almost has two TPs, right? Because he has the one teleport to come back to lane, but if you bully him out, he can just ult back to lane as well and use that as like a pseudo TP, as a, as a reset yeah. to really make it difficult to punish. Because I talked about it in the previous game, you know, the way you 
generally punish top laners, you tax their resources, you get them low, you force out the teleport, then it's the repeat attack. With Sion, you have to do that process again, and you have to do that in a short enough time that the other one hasn't cycled back up already, which is you know really, really tough. Uh, to accomplish, especially in, in this kind of matchup. Right, you think about teleport, you think about the amount of time this spell had to be nerfed in terms of cooldown, as Knight ends up eating part of a culling here in mid lane. No man's using the ulti to get his opponent down to about half HP, but Karsa is now on the top side. And you can see 369 going after the ulti. Not quite finding the mark, but Boss could be in a pretty bad spot. First blood's gonna happen off the map. We'll check that one here in a moment. TP's interrupted, and Boss, it's hammer time, baby. 369's oh, on the board. Their whole bot lane died at the same time as mid lane TP is canceled. Your top laner flashes and dies. If that is not a tragedy, Flowers. That's exactly the word oh, that was going through no. my mind. It is a tragedy on Summoner's Rift. Seven minutes into the game, deaths in bot lane, deaths in top lane, teleport cancel. He might just die lane. again. Karsa's Boss here. into the top lane, but 369's trying to drag him over into the brush. The shield comes through. Wukong's got okay. the damage to pick up the kill here. 369's chasing after him, but this is kind of like one of those left for dead zombies. It's just really lame and sort of hobbles after you. He's just sort of shot fodder, won't really do a whole lot there, and falls apart. Yeah, you know, honestly, I feel like Karsa underestimated his damage. I think Karsa could have actually just stepped forward earlier and made it so Boss couldn't commit to that, right? You start hitting him earlier on in that play and start getting behind the Wukong and you can maybe trade that kill or dissuade him from committing to it. Instead, uh, they were trying to lay that trap for that, that turnaround kill, but 369 did end up getting burst down. Not trying to steal this. Gonna be 50-50. Uh, Karsa goes in. It's secured by Ananasik. Good job there from the Unicorns of Love. But they didn't grab sure it. They get the objective, however, uh-oh, it's on the ground. Okay, Lulu. This Lulu is now the guard of the Rift Herald eyeball <laughs> and must protect it from the unicorns of love who are looking to pull off a heist. You guys are getting a sneak peek of Ocean's 15 or whichever one of those movies they're on by now. Ocean's is. 37. Yes, well, either way, the Ocean's failed because the Rift Herald eye just well, evaporates in the river. Yeah, it was a terrible film. But anyway, Lulu accomplishes her mission. She's more than happy to waddle on back to bottom lane and just keep on doing her job because look at the scoreboard, Isaac. 91 to 65 farm in that bottom lane. Things are going great because of plays like this in our axe replay. Yeah, here is the bottom lane. Santos tries to go forward here to turn this around. They just fight straight through him at the same time. Interruption there, then back down to that bot lane. Not only do they die, it's the flashes forced out. They get the summoners and the kill. Top is now winning so heavily across the map. It is CS advantages, you know, heavily in mid and bot. Top lane is holding up. And things are looking really, really rough for UOL. Ten minutes in this game, you're already down 3k. And not that many plates have even fallen. So, you know, if your members die again, if they start to fall behind again, uh, you are going to be in trouble. And they're itemizing towards scaling, right? You know, they're yeah. not really getting stronger right now. You have a Hex Drinker and a Tear on your Lucian. How does that guy even threaten the Scion in the next 20 minutes? You know, the Gadget, you know, he's building towards a Tear. Not that these items are incorrect, but it's just you have no power right now. You're yeah. emphasizing your late game scaling. And since you're already very far behind and your opponents are building towards combat stats immediately, you're really even further behind in combat power than the gold lead is telling you. Karsa in the enemy jungle won't be able to steal anything away, but hey, who needs to steal anything when you can just go for the kills in bottom lane instead? Lilia tries to show up, Swirl Seed fired off right between the goalposts, three points, but they aren't worth a thing in League of Legends. Collapse coming through from the Unicorns of Love, Karsa's in danger, gets himself back with a beautiful wild growth coming out from the Lulu and Jackie Love. He's got himself another one, 2-0-2 oh, here on the oh. Ash, and Karsa will cash in. These guys are just getting kills all over the place. It is a slaughter down in the bottom lane here. Karsa was already up two levels on an Anasik before that. Jack Jackie Love now 2 0 and 3. You know, he is going to be up 40 CS by the time all of this is done. Kars is taking the dragon. They're getting turret plates because why not? You own everything. And again, that was Summoners here. You know, the flash off of No Man's. And he is really on the back foot despite building for this lane. Yeah. UOL just have nothing going for them in this game already. 
Now this is a monumental lead from top and they are showing why they are one of the tournament favorites here. Unicorns of Love now down 5,000 gold, two drakes, five kills. No turrets have been taken yet in this game. Swirl Seed goes through, but Knight with a good sidestep, always being aware of where he is, making sure to avoid any possible punish coming through from that one. But, all right, Isaac, we're pretty much just barely at the end of the first quarter, and we're already thinking about Hail Mary passes <laughs> for Unicorns of Love. What is the play here for this team? Oh, uh, this seems so dire. Uh, it is. I mean, I mean, honestly, in any realistic scenario, the game is already lost. Um, I think I think the play is, as kind of dire as it sounds, is you have to sit back, you have to depend on wave clear from the zigs, hope that you can hold on, and really look for mistakes from top. Because in any sort of even scenario, you know, over the next 10, 15 minutes, there's just no way you can win. You know, as I yeah. said, they've itemized in towards scaling. They've itemized with double tier. Uh, there's no one to threaten the front line whatsoever, you know, of Scion. And you have a Lulu backing you up. So UOL have got to either, you know, find some sort of a miracle pick or make this game go really, 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 really long where some of that scaling might start to pay off. But uh, it is a, a long and, and dangerous road here for UOL to have any shot in this game. You saw on your screen there, it said Jackie Love had disconnected. Seems like we have some sort of an issue here, and the game is paused. We will provide an update for that as soon as we have information for y'all. Hopefully, we can get back in the game ASAP because, man, things are going great for top esports. This team, you mentioned how they're one of the tournament favorites, currently still undefeated in this group. Remember that so far, no group has had a team emerge undefeated mm -hmm. yet. Knockouts are full of really good teams so far. The six teams are all looking scary. However, each one of them has dropped at least one single game. Top is the last team that has a chance to potentially 6-0 groups. Mm, yeah, and I mean, it, it's really rare, honestly. Despite the fact that we've had some dominant teams win Worlds over the years, I believe it's only three times that teams have actually come out of groups 6-0. Uh, you know, from my recollection, I want to say it was like Longju, Samsung, and maybe SKT were the three teams over different years to have done it. Um, um, two of those teams, you know, did win worlds, but uh, Longju did not. And you know, it, it's it's really really tough to actually have that much consistency, that level of dominance over some of the competition here. You know, most people I think are going to have their eyes on the top versus DRX game yeah. as the big potential bump in the road for top. Uh, but this is you know a very manageable group for them as as far as the groups they could have drawn. UOL as well as FlyQuest, top was always going to be massive favorites over given their dominance in the LPL, how good they have looked all year long, not just in summer but also in spring where they push JDG to five games in that finals. And DRX, you know, I think are, are going to have to step up a level if they really want to be able to take down uh, top because they have been really, really incredible. And the thing that's sort of standing out to me about this game that is unfolding, unfolding in front of us right now is just how every single lane is outplaying individually. 2v2, it was... Unicorns of Love not understanding the matchup and having to lose the flash early on at level one and then just being bullied around by mm -hmm. top esports in that 2v2. Then top side, the kill coming through because Kars is there at the right time and they make the plays happen after 369 avoids similar aggro from Unicorns of Love. And then even when No Man's tries to get involved and help out his side lanes, Knight being able to interrupt the TP everybody from top esports it's not like they're all just coming together and playing this super coherent team fight so we haven't seen mm -hmm. a team fight it's just everyone on top esports outplaying their counterpart and we have gotten uh, we're getting the ready checks right now so it should be you know one two minutes and we'll be back in game but i agree i mean it, it's been you know individual outplays has been better play across the board kind of from top uh, and mid lane, honestly, Knight has been kind of quietly maintaining a lane kingdom there. You know, No Man's building for that matchup, you know, rushing towards the Hex Shrinker, going towards uh, that kind of defensive build to try to survive the Syndra. Uh, but Knight was up a good 20 CS, you know, early on, really had been creating some incredible advantages for himself. So, yeah. UOL are going to take something pretty special to be able to make this a competitive game, to be able to claw their way back into it. There are chances for them. You know, they do have. 
that back line dive to try to threaten the Sanjay, try to threaten the Ash. It's going to be through that that they have to hope to be able to win these fights because you cannot fight through the sign. You cannot fight front to back. You've got to try to uh, somehow find the Syndra, find the Ash, hopefully isolated away from that Lulu so that the Lulu cannot protect them. And the Nautilus alt, Wukong alt, Ziggs alt, all piled on top and hopefully bursting one of those members down to maybe make that a little bit more of an even keeled fight. And that Lulu plays such a spoiler to that. It's what we saw in the bottom lane fight, right? It looked like, okay, maybe Carso was overestimating his position. Maybe he was overestimating how far forward he could play because, you know, no man's comes down. They try to collapse. It looks like they've just got the three-man three man pincer move onto that Graves. And then all of a sudden, nope. Lulu presses all her buttons, Graves gets bigger than hell, and he just stands there and guns everybody down. There's nothing that Unicorns of Love can do about it. And Lulu is just one of those champions that is so frustrating to deal with when you're in a game mm -hmm. that you feel significantly far behind early on because it just completely shuts out all of those comeback mechanisms. Exactly, because it's one of those things, if the Lulu's behind... It can be so squishy, it can be under-leveled. Sometimes you can just kill the Lulu without a second thought and then go on to the rest of the members. But when everyone is fed, if you try to focus the Lulu first, you're leaving the Graves, the Ash, the Syndra, all the free fire. The Scion starts to create space. And even if you kill off the Lulu, you're probably going to have a lost fight. So uh, UOL, definitely going to have a, a really, really tough time in this game. But they have shown some very strong performances. A most competitive game in group stage for them by far was that one against FlyQuest. It was really, really close. And it was only a heroic performance from Power of Evil that really kept them from winning there. UOL looked great in play-ins. They were always going to be an underdog here on that main stage, but yep. we'll see if they can make any magic happen as we should be getting back on into this one pretty quickly. Yeah, we were. We just received an additional update in order to troubleshoot and make sure the issues are fully taken care of. We'll take a couple extra minutes okay. here. So just a little bit more discussion back and forth in terms of how things could go. Maybe, maybe the secret's Lilia. Mr. Azale, maybe we just need to sleep. see a big old sleep. Maybe we need to turn these team fights into a slumber party, and that's how the unicorns of love can get back into the game. But man, will it be difficult mm -hmm. because it's super easy for these champions. Ash and Syndra both have a ton of range, right? Ash has a higher than normal auto attack range. Volleys are also spammable from a great range away. Graves is going to be distanced from them because he's just going to be jumping right up in your face. It will be difficult for the Lilia to put herself in a spot where she can affect the entire enemy team. Mm -hmm. I mean, League of Legends is uniquely difficult sometimes to, to really fight up against these behemoths. When you're going up against a team like Top that is already so good when you are on even terms, right? You're, you're trying to dunk on LeBron James, and every time he, he scores <laughs> on you, he grows a foot taller, right? Because now it's not just LeBron. It's LeBron with the gold lead. It's Top getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what makes it so difficult against these elite, elite teams. Because if you do not hold up in the early stages, even if you have that brilliant fight later on, the gold cushion that a team can have developed can erase that, that meaning in the fight. Yeah, it's like, so you're playing football, but nobody gets any pads from the start, and every time you get a touchdown, you get more armor. <laughs> so nobody has anything, but as soon as you score your first points, hey, congratulations, you guys get a helmet now. Oh, well, now we're playing against guys that have helmets. How are we supposed to deal with that? We run into them, we're knocked on the ground, and they still have helmets. They're fine. It's so difficult to deal with these situations and recover from these avalanches that can happen in terms of not just the gold, but the mm -hmm. map state, man. If you lose control of these lanes early on, you lose control of your jungle. You talked about in the draft laners playing to facilitate junglers, and especially in a meta where graves is popular, where Graves is the defining pick. This champion can be so difficult to deal with in a situation where all his lanes have priority, where he's just allowed to walk through your jungle, he farms so quickly, and if he just has nothing better to do but sit there in a bush with two shells locked and loaded, you're going to have a bad time. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lilia has great farming speed, but you said it. When your laners start to lose, you lose access to your own jungle, and that's where the gold needs can really start to explode. These top-level teams are so adept at getting deep vision and sweeping constantly and placing pink wards in ideal locations to deny as much vision and information from you as possible. So you always have that worry that if you can't see Karsa, he's in the brush waiting by your raptors. He's in the brush waiting for you to come over to that red buff, and it makes it incredible difficult to farm efficiently when you're already at a deficit.
Enough talking from us. We're back into the game and top esports. They got Jackie Love back where he needs to be. And where he needs to be is picking up some plates on the bottom lane tier one turret. 5k gold lead. 13 and a half minutes into the game. 369 farming up. Play. Ash and Lulu just zoning people away, but instead, Nautilus is gone. Fishing the wild growth plus the flash. The follow-up comes through. Oh no, you is gonna get himself away. And oh! now top esports, man. No mercy! No man shows up. The calling goes through. Karsa walks away from this one. More shields from Lulu. I love how Karsa's like, you know what, man? I got 200 HP and he's right there. But these Krugs are looking real good. That shows how much threat Top Esports truly feels like they're under. That looked like it was going so good and then it went so bad. And now Jackie Love gets away. And Top Esports just makes this look so easy. Insult to injury. Jackie Love even gets out alive and... Knight, you knew it's only a matter of time with him on his signature champion on the Syndra. He was undefeated on this champion all year long, has had such an impact. Didn't lose once in summer. 7-0 on the pick, and he is on the roam here with Karsa. They come down, oh, land the scatter across multiple members. Jackie Love throws out the arrow. The turn was just expertly done there from top. And there's a reason why this guy, Syndra, pretty much gets banned constantly. You have seen how good he is in the lane. And he really does like to play out these games, you know, sometimes from unique angles. And it'll be interesting to see if we get to, you know, a team fight stage where he can kind of showcase that. Um, you know, I did a, a Lane Kingdom on it where he always is playing these team fights over walls and playing from angles that you don't ex expect to really look for the maximum amount he can get from those guys of the weeks. And fun to watch him play. Okay, Unicorns of Love. This one should be a kill. Gadget flashing away, making sure Jackie can't get something out of it. And there you go. Unicorns of Love will find their second kill of the game. Update on the turret plates you saw at the top there. No plates for the side of Unicorns of Love. Nobody's going to be setting the table. But 10 plates for the side of Top Esports. They might as well just be throwing a dinner. Fiesta Festival. I don't know. I was trying to come up with something. <laughs> a dinner Fiesta Festival. I didn't festival. want to say dinner party because it's I was like, oh, It's Thanksgiving at too Top's basic. House. Yes, it is Thanksgiving at Top's House, and everybody is invited Everybody's because invited. they Food got all the plates. That's what I was trying to say. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Plate jokes aside, the team is still smashing this game. The next Drake is spawning here in 50 seconds. And last game, you mentioned how, man, an Ocean Soul can really just lock the game away and make your tank unkillable. Well, Ocean Soul's on the board this game, and if Top are able to secure this next Drake on spawn, that means they could have an Ocean Soul at 22 minutes. It's pretty frightening to think about because 369 is going to be incredibly tough to take down. He already has a Sunfire plus the Adaptive uh, to be able to deal with both sides of the damage coming out here from UOL. So if he gets that Ocean Soul, you have no chance of bursting this champion down and he just gets so much from it. That's why Ocean Soul on tanks is so powerful. You know, if, if it's like a Zed or a Yasuo walking around, you always kind of have that thought in the back of your mind, well, maybe you can one-shot him. Maybe you can right. take him down before he gets a lot of value out of that Ocean Soul. With Scion, there's no chance of that, and that's why tanks are such a pain to deal with. And it's going to be mid lane tower going down. Drop it right as the dragon spawns. You want to respond to that to try to stop it from charging your tier two. But it means you now have lost position in and around this dragon pit. But UOL, they've decided we're going to fight for it. There they go. Nice initiation down onto the enemy jungler. That could be a big one, but Karsa gets himself away. Counterattack coming out. Boss nearly going down, spinning around in circles. Back to the fountain he goes. On a Gnostic running away as 369. Oh, he gives him the dabbing penguin, too. Just chasing away the rest of the team. Lily is stuck back in the jungle. Yuyanja with the ward over the wall. Oh, no. On a Gnostic. He thought he might have been able to get away. Yuyanja's just going to chase him down. <laughs> and now here comes Knight on Agnostics on the run. Scatter the week. Say hi to Bambi's mom for me. See you later, Lilia. As Top Esports is up 13 to 2, 7,000 gold lead, soul point. They are looking so damn good. Knight even TPing there to deny the execute. He wants the gold. <laughs> no reason not to at this point. I mean, the items are just so one-sided. When you when you look over, it was actually a great start to the fight from UOL. Getting the engage onto Karsa. You know, 369 wasn't there at the very beginning. And it gave them some hope. Oh, boss no. now maybe getting chased down. Boss thought he was going to get a 1v1 against a Syndra. Remember what I said 
about if Graves has nothing better to do but sit there in a bush and wait? Well, it turns out Graves had nothing better to do but sit there in a bush and wait. And Karsa ended up having that patience pay off. Five, zero, and four on the Graves. Crush. Has the serrated Dirk in inventory working on that lethality. You love to see the itemization come through for that huge burst when you're this far ahead. And not even 20 minutes into the game, we're almost at 10,000 gold separating them. I mean, when you, look, when you look at the completed items, it's just so one-sided. Uh, but this was a great engage, so credit to them for, for going for it. You have to go for those big plays when you're in this type of position. But top kiting back well, pulling them into that corridor. 369 arrives on the flank with that max range ultimate. And from there, when you didn't get that initial kill right off the bat, it was pretty much a done deal. They just don't have the items in the inventory to really threaten their opponents in an extended fight. You know, Lucian's itemization uh, is putting him in, in such a power trough, right? Where you yeah. you're, you have a little bit of CDR, you've got a hex drinker, and you're stacking your tier, right? This is nothing. You know, he's going to need like an IE and an Essence Reaver on top to really That's have not happening. any sort of threat on the Scion. And by that point, Scion's going to be four, five, six items. So uh, this is going to be a really, really tough one. You know, they don't get 20 minutes to scale. You get three minutes because then yeah. it's Ocean Soul. And right now, you will have just try to, got to try to get as strong as they possibly can and, and pray for that Miracle Engage at this next Ocean Dragon. Otherwise, it's going to be fully lights out. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll bet you, I don't know, a bunch of money, Isaac, that we don't see an Essence Reaver and an Infinity Edge together in Lucian's oh, inventory by the, the time this Mikhail's. one's over. But Jackie Love saved by Mikhail's Crucible. Three, six, nine, coming in from the oh, side. Oh, oh my goodness gracious, that damage. One versus four in the back line. Three, six, nine, damn, he's fine. Making the move, starting the fights, and guaranteeing the top esports just has not a care in the world. Baron's been alive for 15 seconds, and that's 15 seconds too long. Top esports, hike it on over to the pit. 20 minute Baron, don't mind if I do. 369 has been crushed into this tournament, rolling nothing but nines. And top, gonna turn. As we see UOL coming over here, they don't wanna risk uh, getting killed at that Baron, but No Man's, you are in trouble, my friend. No Man's tries to get himself away. The Flash will do it. Still trying to just get as much distance as he can. That's there are lots of damage from the Lilia and Ziggs. Nearly able to find the pick on Takarsa, but it will still be No Man's who gets killed. Gadget with a sidestep, barely evading the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, but now he's on the wrong side of the map. 369 shielded up, walking forward. Gadget throwing everything he's got in his pockets. Man, that poor little Yordle, he's about to get his butt kicked. The projectiles go flying, Gadget goes dying. 369, 3 1 and 12. They are just crushing it. Top. Looking like they will not be stopped this game. 21 minutes in, three dragons to zero, 10,000 gold lead. Ocean Soul in one minute here. No man's likely will not even finish stacking that tier up. You know, Gadget is trying to itemize effectively, trying to find a way with this double spell pen build and maybe make something happen. But boss now, here comes 369. He's not even gonna wait. Here comes the Scion train. Wukong, of course, does have a very easy get out of jail free card against that. Just dropping the clone, making sure that Scion rams his head into that instead of being able to chase Wukong. So boss gets out, but one, four and zero Wukong. Now down 40 CS. The Scion's next item will be a Warmox. He's about a thousand gold away from yeah. completing it. And once that's done, he just becomes extremely like what and he can eat all the poke. Like he yeah, can just absorb just every Zig's bouncing bomb. He can step in front of every swirl seed from Lilia. He does not have to care about anything coming out here from UOL. They're gonna try to fight at this Ocean Dragon, you have to expect, because uh, that is their hope to find a pick here. But it is so tough. I mean, the fact that even Yuyanja went towards the Mikhails was very intelligent. Jackie loves on the front line against the Culling, being protected by the Lulu. Jackie trying to step out of the way, has to flash. No man still falls, Karsa goes godlike. Santos walking away with 300 HP, is 369, finds a way to cut off the remaining Unicorns of Love. Ananasik will be chased out. Boss tries to re-engage, but now he's got to once again fall back. 369 going underneath the enemy tier two turret, completely unafraid of anything. Now falling back as they do not have everybody nearby because Karsa and Jackie Love are over there grabbing the ocean soul. Now top esports are truly ready to go. They've got themselves this soul that will prevent any sort of danger that might have been heading their way. Ananasik's trying to grab this scuttle crab, but 
The smite's there in time. Will he be able to get himself away? He does have the passive build up with the flash over the wall. He'll escape, but top have control over the Baron pit here once again. Yeah, and this time there's no contesting it, it feels like. And then it's like just used his flash, uh, used his smite. They're going to try to come over here and see if they can get anything done. They Fox have to. Fox TPing, so they're hoping for a miracle. Last stand of the Unicorns of Love, trying to stop top esports here. 369 frontlining, Jackie Love firing off the volleys. Yuyanja continues just providing support there with the Easy shields. Mikhail's, it just, it stops everything. There's no, there's, what, what do you do? Unicorns of Love, okay, they stopped the Baron, and now Top Esports is gonna go back, they're gonna shop, they'll get back onto the map, and they'll just keep doing what they've already been doing. A TP showing up, Unicorns of Love maybe, no, never mind, that's 369, I didn't know who was TPing in there, never mind. Boss is, uh, he's gone. He's gone. He was there a second ago, but yeah, 369, TP's in. Even if you have your entire team in a couple minutes, uh, I think I might be taking the Scion with Ocean Skull at this point. So. I think Scion and Syndra can legitimately just 2v5. If they couldn't get to the Syndra, probably, but you know, who knows? We'll see. They're going to start this up one more time. No reason not to. You've got the soul, so you just continue regening constantly, even if you're taking that Baron damage. They're just forcing UOL to come to them looking for the turn, looking to close this out. And Anisic is over the wall, but he has no flash. Can Lilia try to perform a miracle steal? Nope, Kars is there with the smite. Top Esports have the Baron now, looking to maybe send this one all the way home. Scion going the for the ulti. Will manage to get on the other side of the mid laner, and there you go, Wombo Combo. Top Esports take down the enemy mid laner. <laughs> 369. <laughs> He's just bonking the turret with a hammer, dude. He doesn't care. Why does this range minion have so much health? Look at how many turret shots he's getting hit by. Look at how little he cares about that turret damage. There's no reason he would ever need to care. This team is so far ahead in this game. Pushing down the mid lane now. Top esports ready to go. Ready to send this one into the history books. 25 minutes in. Mid lane tier 3 turret under pressure. Top esports nearly has that inhibitor turret down. There you go, a couple more auto attacks will do it. Knight staying here in the bottom lane, making sure to keep those minions enchanted. The rest of the team rotating down with him now. Volley to just put a little bit of poke down onto the Unicorns of Love. Second tier three turret nearly gone now as well as Jackie Love will finish off the inhibitor in the mid lane. Top Esports continuing to just take this slow and steady. Not needing to rush anything. Unicorns of Love, they don't really have a chance to fight here. Santa's managing to buffer away from the CC of the knockup of 369. Top Esports, five in the enemy base. Sleep comes out, Karsa loses half his HP, but that's two big ultis. Jackie and Karsa both at half health. Boss looking for a chance to maybe jump in. 369 at half HP now too. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes out, no man's forced to flash away. Top Esports walking back and the Ocean Souls healing him up, making it look like a fountain. Ananasic tries to jump out, but the Eep will not be enough. There's nothing to watch out for. Knight goes unstoppable, Boss goes down. Into the air goes no man's a double kill for Knight and Santos will try to walk out, but it will not work until he just barely hobbles away. The Nexus turrets are done, man. 3-6, now he got hit by the laser! <laughs> it didn't move his health far. Jackie Love finishes off Santos, oh. and really there is just nothing left to say. Top Esports did exactly what everyone was expecting them to do. They take the win, 25 to three. What a stomp from Top. That was a very, very dominating game. 369 completely unassailable in those later stages of the game. The bot lane was crushing it. Knight showcasing once again why no one wants this man to play Syndra. He is way too damn good at it. Really all five of the top members were playing incredibly well. UOL tried to get something going, you know, tried to find their fights, but by the time they were looking for those engages, by the time they were